right, you guys, day two, Rocky Mountain Race Week. Got about, I don't know, went to bed about 1.30. I think Tony and Tess went to bed a little after us, but it is now, we're up about 6.50. Um, got to get on the route to the next track, which is Enos, in Enos, Texas. So, just putting a few things in the car. And, uh waiting for my wife and boy to get out here and Tony and Tess. Today's gonna be a good day, I think. Uh, we got, I think it's like 165 miles or something to go, so it's not that far, but we've also never done this on E85. And uh, there's like no E85, so I've got 25 gallons I brought with me, and hopefully I make it. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the fuel gauge, and when I get about half tank, we'll fill it and uh, see how it goes. Come these guys right here. Ready to go. And of course, we got the little trailer just fully packed to the max. Still gotta get my suitcase in here, which won't be a problem, but, oh, she's full and she's heavy. And we're gonna be working this new clutch we got really hard. I don't know, it works some harder. Probably le leaving and trying to move 30, 3,000 pounds, 3,200 pounds in a split second or dragging this thing around all day. We're at Bucky's, loaded up on a bunch of stuff. This is our third checkpoint of the day. Letting the car cool off. Got the tuner, is logged into some of the data logs. Car is having a really hard time starting and staying idling. 
and overall just running like crap but uh hopefully we can hopefully we can hopefully scott can get it running better and might ask him to put a little more boost to it in fourth gear so when we make a our we're gonna make a hit here in ennis texas so they keep saying this track's really nice and it's a national track so hey we'll put a little more boost to it and see what happens waiting i think i'm gonna wait until it cools off just a little bit more it's pretty dang hot out might walk up to the track and see how things are hooking but i don't know i may may wait a second probably wouldn't hurt to go up there and at least get a number but so i got a slip in my hand but i don't know it's a little hot yet so uh we'll catch up with you when that happens hey my dad called, he said he wants his air tank back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And he's old Vegas. pressure i guess scott's gonna log in and take a look and um i guess we'll wait till it cools off at least we have a slip to turn in we'll wait till it cools off and blast it again <laughs>
I just went PB, personal best, 1044 at 131. Uh, my car was at 210 at the line. My manifold temp was like 150. It just took a very long time to get everybody going. And I got up there with Tess, got on a two-step, made my hit. It left pretty hard, only a 153, but it knocked the stereo out of my dash, the vent. Um, and Tess broke, broke her drive shaft. So they're gonna try and get that welded up. I'm gonna get my stuff loaded. I can't believe this thing is still running with how hot it was. Um, but I wanted to blast it because we're here and I wanted to send it. Uh, and I didn't have the CO2 on. So it might've made a little bit more than gate spring, but um, which is eight pounds, but we'll see. We'll look at the log and see what it was, but pretty crazy. Uh, a lot of smoke. The engine might be on its last leg. I don't know. So babe, what did it look like from the line? Well, it was very violent. And My then I'm trying to watch you and Tess both because you guys are about to go head to head. And they're shooting stuff at me. Oil and <laughs> flames. Because it's worn out probably. But it hooked really good and it took off good. Like, I don't think it's fun. I'll have to look at the video closer, but it went 153, which is what it went in Irwindale. It's been 141, but at least the 60 is, that's a good 60. That's that's what we want. We want to get the car to leave better. So we, on that pass, put a little more air pressure in it. And then Kelly, my homie Kelly, told me maybe uh, tighten up the shock, front shocks a little bit. And I did, which is normally what you don't want for a stick shift car. You want everything loose in the front, but I don't know. It worked. It freaking Knock the stereo out of my dash and everything. It freaking, you'll see it on the GoPro, hopefully. And PB best, and the CO2 wasn't on. Yeah. So that's crazy. We'll look at the log. Uh, one of the guys here says it's probably it probably made more than eight pounds because there was uh, air in the line. But dang, I, you just you get here and you get talking and this and that, and then you forget. We got our and kids. people are breaking down in front of you. Yeah, and we got our kids yeah. at home, so we're trying to still keep tabs with our kids and my mom and. I forgot to turn it on, you know, and when you're going up there, it's like, the, turn the data logger on, make sure that you got the gauges on and the two-step and a so, a lot of stuff going on. But we'll look at the log. Right now, I'm going to go back and get all my shit broke down and put away, and then I'm going to help uh, Tony and Tess with whatever they need. I can't work on their car, but I can definitely help them move some stuff or I don't know what she's going to do. The drive shaft's broke, so she's probably going to have to have them weld it and then find a place tomorrow. But tomorrow is only a 437-mile drive. So this is gonna get interesting uh, for, for the both of us because we're together. So the only good thing is, is if they do fix it, it's probably gonna vibrate the drive shaft and uh, we can go a little slower. My car, the slower we go, the cooler it runs. So anyhow, uh, we're gonna get the car switched over and changed out and we'll catch back up with you when we know what's going on with Tess. Hi.